Sanja Belisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Dida da, dida da da da, da da dit, di 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 da. Here to just uh, describe a technical solution to listening on the new ham band at 630 meters which happens to be 472 to 479 kilohertz or 0 0.472 to 0 0.479 megahertz it's quite a lot higher in frequency than the 2200 meter band not even as high as the standard AM broadcast band. In fact, it's just below the limits there. So if you have a regular ham radio transceiver, uh, like mine, the FT-857D or IC-7... Oh, I don't even remember the number. The ICOM radio, uh, Yesu radio... A lot of them will receive all the way down to 30 or 100 kilohertz, so they'll certainly hear these frequencies. The easiest solution on this particular band uh, is to connect your radio to a one-quarter wavelength wire antenna. Now, you need a little bit of real estate in order to be able to do this. But if you can manage to get the long enough, uh, you know, enough space, and you're probably going to need that much space if it ever comes the time that you want to transmit on this band because you'll need to be a ways from electric transmission lines, at least a mile. So you'll have to be out in the country somewhere. The length in feet of an antenna, remember, for a quarter wavelength is 234 divided by the frequency in megahertz, which in this case is 234 divided by 0.475, which lies roughly in the middle of this uh, 472 to 479 kilohertz application. 7 kilohertz wide. That's the size of this band. Now that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but proportionally to the 440 megahertz band, or 432 megahertz band, uh, it's uh, just about as wide, 7 kilohertz wide, requires, uh, you can't put it, you can put two single sideband signals in there. You're never going to hear that mode on these frequencies. All you're going to hear is digital modes like CW, phase shift keying. I don't think you'll even hear frequency shift keying. But you'll hear any very narrow bandwidth type of modulation. How long is this anyway? Let's uh, calculate. 234 divided by 0.475 megahertz equals 493 feet, roughly 500 feet ought to do it. That's a lot of space, but if you can get an antenna that long, 500 feet and you can get some of it up reasonably high above the ground you're never going to get it up a full quarter wavelength which would be 500 feet actually be a little longer than that in free space uh, you're unless you can unless you have a canyon available which I do happen to have at the long wave ranch in Cody Wyoming but unfortunately, it's too close to electric utility lines. 
we can at least listen on there now with just about any receiver and if you have an antenna like this it's the best deal if you don't you'll have to build your own tuner and then you can tune a shorter wire uh, and uh, or you can you theoretically you can just stuff the end of a of any length of wire that's reasonably reasonably long into the PL259 in the back of your radio. So let's do it. Uh, if you're in a place that's relatively non-noisy, uh, that is maybe, ironically enough, a mile or more away from electric utility lines, you should do pretty well. And uh, you'll find out that it behaves a lot like the very low end of the AM broadcast band which starts at 535 kilohertz. Maybe you can find a clear channel station there and listen to it on your regular stereo radio set. Anyway, that's my recommendation for now. I'm not going to do it because I have enough trouble on the on the regular HF ham bands with power line noise. Uh, with a good antenna on this band, or 2200 meters also, God only knows what you would hear. Stan Gibalisco, I mean if anything besides a buzz, Stan Gibalisco, proprietor and operator of W1GV, saying 73 for now which means best regards in ham radio jargon and so long which means did did da did da that's did 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 da did da